Hey dads, what is up? This is George from the Present Fathers Podcast. Thanks for tuning into this episode. If you are enjoying the podcast and you like what we're doing, please do us a huge favor and go to your platform of choice and leave a review, whether that's on uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It would really help us out a great deal. Also, if you're watching on YouTube or you want to watch on YouTube, head over to our channel there, give us a like and subscribe, share the episodes. Um, just really appreciate all the support we have and would appreciate your continued support by uh, taking a few minutes and giving us a review. So thank you so much. You're going to really love this episode. Uh, our guest is a really great guy, really good conversation. So I'm excited for this one. And uh, thank you so much. We love you all. And we will see you in the next one. Welcome to the Present Fathers Podcast. This is the show that focuses on climbing the mountain of fatherhood together. We believe that dads matter. And that's why this show is for you. So gear up, dads. Get ready. It's time to start climbing. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Present Fathers Podcast. Tonight we are joined by Keith. Keith uh, goes by the trainer guy. Uh, you will find him all over the internet, inspiring dads, dropping the fat in father, and uh, helping dads lose the dad bod and embrace the rad bod. Keith, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, George. It's great to be here. And um, yeah, like you said, uh, I have a real strong passion for helping dads because I know what it's like as myself being a dad um, uh, and just the difference that fitness can do to your life. Yeah, it's definitely a very common thing we hear where, you know, first time dads, especially um, in that first early period when they're, you know, less than a year old trying to stay on top of yeah. just everything in life is very difficult. So um, I, I, I'm really excited to learn from you and, and get some tactical advice in terms of uh, staying on top of the fitness game because it sounds like you've got it pretty well figured out. So why don't we go right there? Um, tell us a little bit about your family and, uh, you know, were you always fit and passionate about fitness or was it something that you had to kind of rediscover and, and build, you know, kind of your coaching from there? Yeah. Um, so as a kid, you know, I was, I was fairly active played a bunch of tag or sports and that sort of stuff. And so sort of approach into university is when I start becoming sedentary and you sort of lose your fitness if you don't uh, keep up with it. Um, so I, I did make a change and I got some results and I stuck with it. And um, I never really had like, you know, super good results. I never really had like a six pack, but I, you know, have a good body fat amount um, and, and good muscular composition. Uh, and then when I had, um, when we had my first child, uh, yeah, it's just the routine broke and the extra stress, um, you form bad habits and you just sort of kind of like end up spiraling down. And, um, there's a bunch of times when I would try to get it back, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to start it up and, and just, uh, it didn't happen. And, you know, um, for like six years that kind of went on and uh slowly and you know progressing towards uh, seeing myself as this like homer simpson figure where i'm becoming more lazy i i'm becoming stupider <laughs> i'm just uh you know um and and a bad father like not as good of a father as i could be right and uh i didn't like who who that person was so i I had to make the change on the inside. I had to really take a deep look at myself. I had to get in touch with my emotions, have a good cry, and, and be able to move at least forward, right? And it's not something that like, you know, you just do one day and you're done. It's a, it's an everyday thing, you know, being on top of your thoughts, being on top of your emotions and, uh, and being on top of your physical aspect, you know, how you eat and, and doing something active and just shifting the mindset from like, you know, I can't do this to I can do that. Yeah, it's great. I, I like how you made it very clear that you had to change, you know, what's in here first uh, before the physical changes came. Because I think a lot of people just think they're going to go, uh, you know, find, find a routine online or something, download some, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger lifting guide and like, you know, overnight, they're going to start seeing these massive results and stuff. And, um, you know, you kind of alluded to it. It 
it becomes mental therapy, mental health, yeah. staying, staying fit. Uh, so that's awesome, man. So tell us about after kind of making that, um, you know, that, that initial change and like, Hey, I've got to take action. You know, how long did it take you to kind of feel like you were back, back to where you wanted to be? Um, and then how did that kind of fuel, you know, what you do now for a living? Yeah. Uh, hundred percent. So I, I did take on, um, a tech job became like a senior product manager for three years. And that, that's a job did not, uh, help, you know, it jobs, very intense hours. Um, so, it, you know, it didn't really help with my stresses and all that. So with the, um, decline in the tech industry, the, the startup company sort of went under and, um, it just sort of was a good point for me to, uh, explore other things. And, um, the way that I started, you know, I is a way I think a lot of people should start. I didn't throw myself into a gym and be like, you know, okay, I'm gonna go do this and like, you know, really serious. I just took it gradually, really small steps. Uh, I'm a gamer. I like playing video games, and um, I would do this routine where I'd play maybe maybe for like two hours of games, and in that time, I would start doing some exercises, you know, a set of push-ups between a loading screen, a uh, set of push-ups in between uh, a death, right? And I would get to this shift where it was, you know, maybe in that two hours, 15 minutes was exercise and an hour and 45 was gaming. And then, you know, 30 minutes, 45. And this is over the course of a month. And then all of a sudden now it's an hour and an hour. And then when I got to that point, it was like, okay, now I'm ready to go to the gym because I've established this routine for about a month. I know that I'm I'm doing it and I'm I'm committed, and uh, it's time to get just you know a little bit more serious with it. And that's uh, really what it's all about. It's progression, moving to the next stage gradually, and something that you can maintain. Because if you throw something at someone too much, like you said, they you can go do an exercise program, but it's sort of like yo-yo dieting. Um, if you do things that aren't sustainable, the second that you get off of it. Your mind, your ego goes, you've done such a good job. Wow, look at you go. You deserve to spoil yourself. And then you spoil yourself hard. And now you've developed this new habit of eating. just, oof. So. <laughs> so it's interesting. You um, you kind of gradually replace the gaming habit with fitness. I mean, do you still game and like it's just a better balance now? Or, um, you know, could no, I, I think, um, uh, my gaming is definitely a little bit more about how you kind of made that happen. Uh, yeah, my definitely my gaming's definitely um, reduced the amount of time. Um, I still do game, but uh, it's not something that I do every day now. Whereas, ex well, exercise isn't something I do every day either now. Uh, I definitely recommend when people are starting out that they definitely do something every single day. But once you've you know established an exercise routine. It, one of the things that I, I'm seeing, and I've been doing this new video content on my YouTube where I'm remixing videos, and it's typically a lot of gym fails. And I'm just starting to really realize that there are so many people who take exercise to the extreme, everything in moderation, right? And we get these people in the habit of, I got exercise every day, and I, I have to hit a new PR. And that's when you get these ego lifters who are, you know, you're, you're the danger that that is coming from these sort of exercises is just not worth the risk like it, it's just so i i have decided you know i'm never gonna power lift i'm never gonna you know put my life in a necessary risk you know i could as a dad but it just doesn't make sense for me and then i think like a lot of the population uh, or at least the exercise population needs to kind of be able to take a week off like i talked to several people today who were like oh, my elbow's sore and oh, my neck's sore. And they're like, well, when's the last time you took a week off from the gym? Uh, and, and they're afraid to because they're afraid if they break that routine that they won't come back to the gym. Yeah, that's I've definitely found that to be successful for me personally. Um, I have two rest days built in every single week. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I might, especially when it comes to diet too, uh, you know, Fridays, like my free night, go get pizza, whatever. I like intentionally buy a pizza every Friday night. Cause it's kind of like something to look forward to. Um, so yeah, same thing. Like it's all, 
you know, if I go on vacation, I don't stress about it or whatever. I'll eat the cake or whatever, have the margarita yeah. type of thing. And then, um, you know, it's just right back to the routine as soon as I get home. So I think that's a really great point. Um, you know, it's very tempting to just throw yourself into it and, uh, make no exceptions in, in some regard because then it's easier, right? You, the temptation of falling off, but well, and um, even high level athletes include a deload week. Yeah. <laughs> stay in that position as long as you can and then, and then go to a different position maybe like um like a child squat and get down into that deep pose and, and play and yeah a bit like uh you know those drinking games every time you die you take a shot well every time you die you have to do a squat do, or something do a burpee. <laughs> yeah burpee. exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Shots, I like that every missed round is a five burpee penalty <laughs> hey i I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of World of Warcraft, but uh, yes. I was I was big into that um, at one point in my life. But uh, one of my favorite guys on there is a guy named Bajir. His real name is Jackson. He is a uh, multi-glad, like he's rank one warrior. He's unbelievably good. Yeah. But you'll see him while he's streaming, and he looks like he's walking, and it's because he's on a treadmill, and he, he competes. He's actually doing a competition right now. I've been watching his Instagram. He's been playing yeah, like bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a professional wow. bodybuilder. And like he is absolutely okay. yeah. massive and like ripped. And it's so funny because like he's still in there just destroying kids, you know, and doing <laughs> his thing and streaming every single day. But then like you see him just getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer in his stream. So it's it's cool. Like I can re I can relate. It's to like that it's meme good. with the three bodybuilders encouraging the little kid. <laughs> They're all like, "You go, kid." Ignore that. You got warrior. this. I mean, yeah. he's literally a warrior in real life, just increasing his strength every day, right? That's it, That's man. Cool. Yeah. So, so it's all about that mindset in. of strength. <laughs> yeah. So Keith, I wanted to ask you what you think about the future of gaming and exercise. I love to play boxing, virtual reality games. I love to play um, on my quest. Uh, my heart rate yeah. will go to 160. I'm exhausted. Mm. I'm, I mean, they're wonderful workouts. The only problem is I tend to sweat a lot. And so 30 mm -hmm. minutes in, the game is done. So that's kind of the maximum I can do. Um, but what do you think about the future of uh, gaming involving treadmills? I mean, you, maybe you've seen the movie Ready Player One, where they're literally acting out the activities, um, you know, versus sedentary gaming and kind of including that. Um, yeah, I, I think that the technology, like, isn't quite there. Um like, as you said, 30 minutes, you're kind of up. Um, for me, I've experienced nausea. Um, you get that um, sort of like when you're driving and reading, uh, your mind doesn't uh, really realize where you are. Um, they need to fix that. You know, when you're sweating, the, the lenses fog up, uh, could be lighter, could, you know, now it's more mobile. Um, the one I have is, you know, tethered to my computer. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that uh, that's something that's going to be more prevalent in the future as you know health and fitness become more of a, an issue and you know the technology becomes more widely available um you know beat saber was a big one that i played that i liked um, love beat saber and, yeah um even and, and, and it doesn't even really have to be um you know fitness focused like there was um uh, it's escaping me but there was one where you, you pause time when you uh, press a button and you have to like move around in position and just like the fact that you're standing while playing you're moving your body uh that's so much better than sitting and you know just stationary right so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, my hope is that that's that's the next uh you know paradigm is who would want to sit and play a game like world of warcraft when you could be the elf swinging your sword but you're actually holding a real sword that's heavy. And so you get to work out and, uh, you know, not only I think would it be more realistic and, um, engrossing, but I think you could get a really great workout. You know, if you're, uh, exploring a forest for three hours a day, you know, trying to hunt people down, you're, uh, you know, you're getting some exercise in the process. <laughs> I'm all in. Yeah. It's also a lot of, it'd be, it'll be interesting to see like how it's adapted for like professional athletes and stuff too, to, uh, you know, like maybe for football to reduce, risk of like injuries and in practice and things like, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see if, when it, the tech gets to a certain level that it could sustain that kind of, uh, you know, um, high, high immersive kind of need. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting topic for sure. So, uh, Keith, I'd like to move forward and go into a little bit more specifically your training program. How is it different? You know, how is it really helping dads? um 
versus kind of just you know the standard like gym bro type of you know bro science <laughs> yeah um so like i sort of touched upon with the whole uh, mindset and the change happening on the inside uh, i've specifically worked on creating a, a program that um, we go through your vision we which is so essential making sure that you can visualize and see the future that you want, not just for your fitness, but for your, your whole life financially and, and all that great stuff. And it's about peeling the, that onion as well, because just saying I want to be fit, just saying I want to be rich, that's not good enough. You need to get your why. I want to be you know healthy because I want to be around for my kids. Well, why do you want to be around for your kids? Uh, you know, because because it's really important to me because I want to be a good dad. These are my values, you know, and you start to get more and more motivated, the more specific you've got. Um, so once we get past that vision, um, then we look at beliefs. We go through because uh, a lot of the dads that, you know, I work with 35 plus, that's a lot of time to be alive. And the longer you're around, the more likely you are to pick up some bad beliefs. You probably maybe failed the exercise program once or twice. So you most likely believe that it's not possible for you to be healthy again. And that's, I think, why a lot of people don't try or they don't start because they just have that belief. So we, we start looking at, you know, where did that belief come from? Okay, so you failed when you were 15 at, at the gym. Now you don't want to go to the gym ever again, right? Okay, so that's just a belief. You can change that. That's, you know, that's not... It's not anything. You can just start a new belief that you, you know, you can do it. You will succeed this time. So just, you know, rewiring the, um, the subconscious, uh, going through creating habits. So the, the goal is, is not to say you need to drink four liters of water every day. You're drinking one liter. You need to drink 1.5. You did that. Great. Good job. They get some small wins in. And then they're progressing towards four liter, right? So it's it's both the small victories, they get some good habits, and then more habits form after that. Um, smart goals, you know, your specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, time-based, uh, which is just essential so that we can actually track that we're you know moving in the right direction. And um, again, goals are not you know the be all end all, the vision is. Your goals are just the signpost to let you know that you're on track towards your vision or not. Um, and then having a plan for obstacles. So what exactly are you struggling with? Uh, time management. Okay, well, let's come up with a bunch of plans for how we can better time management. Walking out time for exercise, doing uh, exercise with the family, combining activities together like video games and exercise. Uh, you're, you're able to, you know, make time. Like the excuse that I don't have time to do it is just not good enough. Uh, I see people in public transit just sitting. They're just sitting. They're listening to music. They're not, you know, dancing and moving their body. They're just sitting because they're embarrassed of what someone will think if if they were to dance to their music. Like they just they don't to... take the stairs. They take the elevator. You know, it's, there's exactly. there's a lot of little things you can do throughout your day where you can. You'd be surprised how much activity you can bake into mundane things just from doing the slightly harder thing. <laughs> yeah, and the you know, and and the exercise, the activity is is only part of it, right? You, it, and it's it's about the nutrition side, enjoying the foods that you love, you know, because if you get rid of all of those, you're gonna have a, a serious dopamine problem. And you're just, you know, you're going to set yourself up for failure. So you still need to enjoy those foods. You just portion them a little bit. And you start to go, um, and, you know, as you do that, and you start to get some results with your exercise, you go, you know, maybe I don't want to, you know, eat junk every single day. Maybe I want to start fueling my body because I'm working so hard in the gym. I need to work hard in the kitchen too. And I know for my, myself that when... I wasn't taking care of myself. You know, if I got fast food, guess who's eating fast food too, right? I'm not cooking a separate meal. So not only does it affect, you know, your life, it affects your whole family's life. And that's such a great point. And it, it just drives home how serious it is to the, the long-term 
impact, either positive or negative, is very far reaching, you know, as the dad. If you don't take this seriously, um, you know, it, it's going to produce results, but they'll be negative versus, you know, positive. So I'm really glad you called that out. And I love too how intentional you are about starting with, um, you know, people's why really digging into their vision because that you're hundred percent on, on target with that. It, in anything you do in life, you need to define that why that passion, that vision yeah. long-term for why it is you're doing this thing, because otherwise you're going to just, your heart won't be in it and you're going to, you'll maybe you'll be successful, but you'll be like kind of held back or you won't really be fulfilled from it. So that, that's so beautiful, man. I love that. Um, I think Justin has something for you. So I'll, I'll kick the mic over to him now. <laughs> yeah. No. So I, like George said, it kind of resonates. Um, George actually said something that made me think of, of somebody I met one time. So um, I went through a coaching program in uh, my old industry and one of my good friends actually worked for a company. Um, I'm not going to say who they are, but uh, the gentleman that owns this company or was one of the, the, uh, the prime speakers from this company, his name's Rory Vaden. You can look him hmm. up. He has a book called Take the Stairs. And it was a phenomenal book. I went and had dinner with Rory and some friends of ours and Oh my gosh, like so, so, so good. Um, it it kind of harps on some of the things you're talking about, you know, resisting the temptations of like quick fixes, uh, eliminating distractions and, you know, transcending like personal setbacks in order to reach your goals. And then just taking the smaller steps, just keep taking steps. That's, that's literally it. And I don't know, man, I just, I had to mention that book because when you, the way you were speaking, when George said that, it was kind of like stars aligned. I was like, ah, I got to mention that book because- <laughs> Uh, Rory did a very, very excellent job of talking about there's two different types of people in this world. There's the people who put their carts back and there's people that don't, hmm. you know, are, are you the guy that is going to sit there and leave something when it only takes 15 seconds? Because if you're not willing to put a cart back, are you willing to go the extra mile to get your goals in fitness or mental or in your work or wherever, you know? So yeah. that was, that was just something that kind of resonated. And I, I appreciate that, that that's where you come from and that's how you teach, because I think that's a great, great model to, to work with. And then Justin, we had that interesting conversation where uh, recently it was considered ableist to say, to talk about the, uh, the, the cart, because if you're not mm. able to easily put the cart back, that doesn't make you a bad person. It just means and I was like, why are we going here? You know, just like, <laughs> we had to make everything difficult. You know, it was, it was so funny. But yeah, that was the argument. That was the pushback against the um, the cart argument was that that wasn't fair, you know, to people who would struggle to put a cart back to make that um, analogy. So I, <laughs> I thought that was kind of How many people so, are really going to struggle to put a well, so, four pound cart back? Well, I've been cart thing real yeah. quick, Dustin. So we were together and we went to Costco, right, to, to go uh, load up for the weekend. And there was that one guy riding his, you know, Costco provided scooter, dragging his cart with his hand. So he's, he's pulling, you know, basically a caravan him, himself on a scooter and pulling the cart. And I'm, I'm not trying to be like condescending or anything, but his cart was loaded with just stuff that makes you obese. All of it. There was there was like no nothing in this giant Costco sized cart filled to the brim overflowing. It was all like soda and ice cream and cookies and. I mean, I just felt bad for the guy because obviously he's really struggling, but it's like with the, with the diet thing, man, you can't, you can't eat, you, you can't do, you know, D plus work and expect to get a plus results, right? Like the, the, yeah. <laughs> the diet right. matters. So I think Dustin, you actually had some pushback on the diet too, right? I did. So Keith, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, yeah. I think, um, I, I've, I've heard a lot of different takes on the best way for someone to start uh, eating healthfully. Um, there's the incremental method that you've mentioned. And then there is the more dive in initially while you're excited about it, get some mm. results and then scale back from there. So I'm curious your take on, we just did 75 hard recently. I'm, uh, I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with that, where you cut out alcohol, um, you add a bunch of water, you do some intense exercise and you follow a relatively strict diet for a short period of time, get some great results recognizing that yes, it's not realistic to live like that all the time, but it teaches you that it's possible to do it at least for a short period of time and then slowly return back to a more normal um, way of eating. And I'm curious your, your take on which one you think is better for most people. I think maybe a hybrid would be, you know, the best 
where, like you said, you're going in gun ho maybe you, you try really hard and you, you do sort of wean off. Um, but I, I, you know, I guess, yeah, again, the biggest concern is that, uh, without, without the, the, um, the inner work that you're just going to end up with your ego taking over and redirecting your actions and, and not allowing you to properly scale back. Cause I think that takes still a lot of discipline, which I'm not sure if you've built up at that point. Um, and depending on how long that time span you're talking about, I think you're still better off to, to set a habit rather than uh, do something that's not going to be a habit in the long run. That makes sense. Yeah. You might get results for six months and then you balloon back bigger than you were before and you kind of defeated the purpose and then you feel like a failure. So there, there is that risk for sure. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things I do with my diet too, is I, I use intermittent fasting as a way to create discipline, uh, mm -hmm. create small wins for myself, because if I can go without the things that I want for X amount of time, I train my body, and my brain, to ignore the urges, right? Um, I'm getting rid of those urges. So, uh, do you utilize intermittent fasting for your for your people that you you try to help out with with the dieting, or is that something you wait until they're at a certain point? Or so for me, fitness is not a one size fit all. Um, if intermittent fasting is an option that uh, someone wants to try, I definitely support that. If it's something that they're not comfortable with, they don't feel like it makes sense with their lifestyle. It's not something I push on them. Um, same thing if they want to be a vegetarian, I'm not going to force them to start eating meat. It's really just it's personal training. It's personalized to, you know, what they like, because that's what's going to make them successful. I love it. I love it. I think George is uh, wanting I'll to, have to, uh, I'll have to. I'll have to clip in the little meme of like, you sure about that? <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> uh, no, nice. I think that's... Uh, I, I've kind of always adopted. I've I, so just I'm I'm a little bit of a weirdo. I I've tried like keto, carnivore, intermittent fasting. I did intermittent fasting actually for years. Uh, I've yeah. basically done all the things, you know, just to kind of like try it, prove it, see it, you know, I can speak yeah. with a little bit more authority on it if it if it actually worked or not. Um, and I've found that you know for me personally, kind of what you were describing there, a little bit of the happy medium is the most realistic for the long term, right? So like the last almost six years of my life are probably the most fit comprehensively that I've been at any point in my life where it wasn't like I peaked for a big competition and then kind of tapered off or something. I've just been consistently the last six years, pretty dang solid the whole time. And nice. it's because in that period, I just kind of stuck to what I know works. We've had previous guests talk about like, they just eat a simple diet. Like they know that if they have chicken and rice every day for lunch, it's exactly the macros they need and they don't stress about their diet. I've kind of yeah. always been that way. And I guess I never really had like a fancy way of phrasing it. We've had several guests now that like you, uh, who articulate it better than me, but, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the goal, right? Uh, it's not, you're not working to be, uh, healthy or what was the phrase? There's such a great phrase. I'm, and I'm struggling right now, but it's more of a, you exercise to have health essentially benefit your life. You're not, the, the goal isn't, being healthy necessarily right it's just so that your life is better so i think a lot yeah. of people get stuck on that like you were saying earlier where the gym in a, in a way becomes like their god and if they don't or their religion you know and if they don't do yep. it every single day perfectly it's like the shattering failure and then they don't know what to do and it's it's just not realistic so um yeah i really appreciate you sharing how, how you help your clients but I, i'd like to dig in a little bit more specifically you know how how, how do you, especially like new dads, how are you helping them kind of stay on top of this thing who work with you? Um, or just in general, things that are a little bit more dad specific versus, you know, a 20 something who's got all the time in the world to go <laughs> do whatever program they want. Yeah. Um, I realized that, you know, I can help anybody because if I can help a dad, you know, they, someone who doesn't have those sort of issues, those stresses, um, so, so part of it is having to, um, yeah, just make sure again, you know, the vision and all that stuff, but then give them the tools that they need. Um, they, they need to realize that self care, you have to fill your cup up so that you can, you know, fill your family's cup up. And that's something that, you know, fathers just seem to either, 
you know, run with their cup with a couple of drops in it and just seem to just keep on going and going. And, uh, you know, as men, we're not really encouraged to connect with our emotions and be able to reach out for help. And then I think that's you know, a lot of the issues that end up coming up for men uh, as a result of that. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just making sure that they, they know that they need to take care of themselves, which, again, doesn't mean um, having to go to the gym for an hour. It could mean getting a meditation in for 15 minutes just so that you're, you're handling that extra stress and you're refocusing and, and you're, you know, you're still staying positive. Um, it could be uh, making sure that they're still just eating right. It's, it's whatever little things that they can do um, in that state, you know, um, new fathers versus, you know, seasoned fathers is, is still a little bit different issues, but yeah, that's sort of uh, some of the stuff that we do. Yeah, and I've got to I just got to step in here real quick and mock mock George real quick. Uh, what he was trying to say eloquently, oh. but not eloquently, was uh, you're not living to be fit; you're being fit to live. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> That's the phrase. Yep, that was the one. But I think it's it's that that phrase is like it's so good, right? Um, you could right, you could make your ultimate goal to just be the the fittest possible version of yourself ever but then like okay then what you, you know what i yeah. mean like okay so you hit it let's say you hit your absolute peak or as close to it as humanly possible it's like okay now what <laughs> you know there's there's still all the world out there all the things that you still have to do so i just like that it puts it in perspective for a lot of people i think or it should um because it like you were saying with you know take the cheat day or take the rest day Real life is a, is a huge marathon, right? It's hopefully yeah, 80 it's plus so years Amen. of discipline, right? So yeah. it, maybe for a year or two, you have some some really intense you know, peaks that you're working towards. But in reality, it's about keeping that consistency over literal decades. So, Yeah, and I think you have to be realistic too, right? Because the realistic, uh, your, your expectations and what realistically happens, the gap between that is misery, right? And so... Yeah, like you said, you have to have reasonable plans and goals. And like for me, man, I want to be Captain America physique, right? Yeah. I'm tall. I'm 6'4". I could, I could do it, but it would take a lot of time. And it's like, do I want to look like a superhero or do I want to use that extra time to be the, be the superhero for my kids, right? And so that's that's my choice. I'd rather be a superhero for my kids than look like one, right? And so, like, yes, I I maintain my fitness to to be healthy and to to have longevity, but but man, I I'm not going out there trying to be like Arnold and hitting the the iron for four hours a day to to be some grandiose expectation in my head, right? Well, you actually kind of end up lowering your life expectancy once you start getting up in that size. Your heart just can't handle pumping that much into that much mass, so. Yeah, again, it's, uh, as you were saying, like, where do you go from there? And that's the problem that all these lifters have is that they just have to keep going up in the weight and the weight. And, you know, there's been deaths, there's been serious injuries. It's just like, it's not worth it. It's the same thing with when you're taking steroids. It's sure you're going to get some gains and you're going to get, you know, big, but then once you have that, what do you do from there? Now you're dependent on this chemical and, you know, you're going to want to up it again and then you're taking more and, and it's just like everything in moderation we're here to be fit you know not to not to die not to break a bone like it's it's gone too far at the other end right so keith talk to me about uh, obstacles do you visualize with your clients and say okay it hasn't happened yet but let's say an injury occurs or let's say um, you're, you have another kid on the way, but it's not here yet. Uh, how is that going to affect you? Do you look at roadblocks and figure out how to handle them or what, what's the process for that? Yeah. So, uh, typically they're, they're the ones who come up with the, the obstacles. Um, uh, we try to go over what the major ones, you know, might be, uh, if they do have a think of a previous injury or if they were to hurt themselves, you know, what would you do in that situation? Um, but mainly most of the obstacles are, are, you know, what are you facing in the moment? Uh, we deal with most of those, uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, typically run a three month program. So towards the end, 
uh, you know, when they're ready to graduate and, and send them off, that's when we kind of do more talk of, you know, what, what could happen in the future. Because uh, my program is really based on uh, creation of, of all that mindset, but also the education of progression, regression of exercises so that, you know, they know how to move their body, and they're going to know how to do things for the rest of their life. Um, and, you know, having uh, the plan to overcome the certain uh, obstacles, common obstacles that, that come up, yeah, it, it's it's essential for them to succeed long term on their own. So, so what are the more, what are the big more, ones? Oh, go ahead, Justin. I was going to say, so more or less, you're kind of not only creating habits, but like a mindset, so to speak, to kind of overcome anything that may come up or that will help them to overcome the obstacles, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if they're, uh, you know, if, if they're planning that, uh, you know, a big work event's going to come up and, and they're going to need to, uh, do a sprint for, for, for a month, how, how are they going to be able to manage within, within that? Um, and you know, uh, it's not always as, as simple as an answer, but it's just getting them thinking about that stuff so that, you know, in the moment when things come up, oh, I have to do this sprint, uh, you know, you're just so flustered, you're just thinking about that. But if you've, you know, put some thought into it beforehand, then you can come up with some strategies or, or you're more, your subconscious is more primed to be receptive for for solutions in that moment. Yeah, Justin, that makes sense. Did you, have, did you have a follow up question? Yeah. So uh, top obstacles that you tend to um, get from your clients, what are the big ones that they tend to um, find are going to happen? And do you find that you're successful in overcoming them when they occur? Uh, yeah, biggest top obstacles um, is just, again, um, making sure that they, they they're still going to be progressing um when they they move into you know say if it was to lose say 10 pounds they might have more that they need to lose so an obstacle usually is that they're not um uh, that they're not ready to really do what is required at that stage because you know it, if you weigh 300 pounds, you need to lose 15 pounds. That's going to be a lot easier than somebody who's 200 pounds trying to lose 10 pounds. So uh, exp explaining them to them that, you know, you're on your own. Um, you know how to exercise, you know how to progress, regress, but you're going to have to be doing, you know, this, this and that. And uh, just getting out of that comfort zone, right? Making sure that they're not going to fall back into bad patterns. So just identifying, you know, why, again, like it all reverts back to uh, your beliefs, like why did you not want to exercise, making sure that those things don't come up again and uh, yeah, that they're successful. That makes sense. Deal. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Keith, I got a question for you about fatherhood. Uh, what has, what have you learned through the process of coaching all these other dads that has uh, made you a better dad? process yeah uh so you know let people open up in, about their lives and, and their stresses and they talk to me about their kids and the issues that they have and you know talking to other parents definitely gives you perspective on your own kids and you know sometimes when if you don't have that you think gee your kids are the worst but there's always a worse one <laughs> and you just realize <laughs> that you know <laughs> that your kids aren't aren't as bad as you think and that uh Again, that's your mindset that you need to change and their kids and um, yeah, you just be, have to be patient. And that's part of the thing, of, you know, going to the gym and building willpower is you get that willpower when they keep on saying no or they, you know, they talk back and they, you know, you, you don't just react and yell. Like when, I, and again, I said I was becoming the Homer Simpson, I, I would get into that state where I was like having to yell all the time and I would sort of almost become like the go-to and it's like now like i'm very very calm very like you know like i just have to i give the the, the nasty look now but uh <laughs> you know I, I i'm not yelling right so yeah that was a good dad look that was impressive i was a little firm, <laughs> firm and silent <laughs> yeah yeah you, you don't want to be the homer simpson why are you little, why are you little? They, yeah that's great man i uh the perspective is so powerful right uh that i think 
we can all relate. Every dad who listens to this can relate to that where, you know, your kid will have done something maybe that morning and then you go out somewhere else and see like, oh, okay, all right. I need to, I need to take it easy. So that's always a good healthy dose of <laughs> reality that we can, we can apply. Um, yeah. Like Justin, you got something, right? Yeah, no. So the... <sighs> Let's let's get real real quick. So there's always going to be some clients who aren't willing to participate as much as they should, um, just because they don't surround themselves with good men and a tribe, and they're not lions, so to speak. So, what do you do to to hold those clients' feet to the fire and to hold them accountable? What are some of the habits or the things that you say to them to kind of either motivate or to push them in the right direction? So uh, typically, I really only want to work with people who are a 10 out of 10 in terms of wanting to get this done and people who are action takers. Um, what I also do is I do have an app, um, you know, that they use and, and there's sort of that community aspect where you can see uh, this person hit this PR and other people can support them in, in that community. Um, and then, you know, can share with other dads, their experiences and, um, you know, and then, they become, I guess, lions, as you said, because they're then part of a tribe. Um, but yeah, it, if you're getting a client who, you know, it's obviously there's something else is the issue, right? And it's just, I'm not a therapist, so it's not, it kind of goes above me, but I can be there to support them. I can be there to listen. Um, and, you know, if you can identify what the act, actual issue is, then you can sort of, they can move forward and identify that, right? If you know uh, you're feeling lousy because uh, something else happened at your job or something, it's not that uh, your exercise is down. You're just now associating uh, your results. You're starting to just pile on. You know that's what the ego does. It just piles more and more stuff on top of you so that it feeds off of your energy. And it's uh, so it's you know I'm able to say, hey, like you know, are you sure this is you? Because you told me you were ten out of ten. This is your vision. Remember your vision, the one that you read every single day in the morning that motivates you and, and gets you that radiating feeling in your gut that makes you know that you're feeling alive. You know, the tingles like. Remember that? Yeah, no, that's I, I love that because it's it's so hard to motivation's garbage. Let's just be real. Uh it's it's the fire inside that really gets you going and that's not motivation so much as it is direction or internal will or willpower so to speak um and and i think that it's it's a really smart tactic because obviously there are people who you just can't help because they don't want to help themselves yeah. those are definitely not people that that deserve your time and attention but there are some who need help who need a push and i think community is a big thing especially for men because you know, if you put if you put a guy in a you, you said it ego. If you put a guy in front of other men and they're getting absolutely destroyed, they're going to start pushing a little harder. They're going to start well, working. Shame. Yeah, shame's I mean, a powerful and, and I hate to say shame is not something you want to use unless absolutely necessary. No, 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 no I don't mean, mean I don't mean shaming someone, but the unsaid collective shame that you have from like a team, yes. or a unit. Don't want to let them down. Whatever, right? It it's it's the unspoken shame that should exist which is a lost art in western society now where you know especially with men if you are called to live up to the standard of whatever it is whatever team you're on um whatever tribe you're a part of and you're not living up to it no the other guys don't need to say a word you know mm. and they know and they know that you're the weak link and that that used to be a positive thing and then instead of crushing that guy be like you're such a piece of garbage you can come alongside him and be hey man what's the deal you know, what's going on? Talk to me. Yeah. But there, that like to imply that today is like I'm going to get canceled for saying this. But <laughs> it's the same thing with your fitness, right? If you surround yourself with guys uh, who are pushing themselves and they have like you know, like you, Keith, have a very good holistic approach to being healthy across the board, and that they're pouring into you on a relatively daily basis. You know how are you ever going to fail? You, you can't like, you would have to yeah. make yourself fail at that point because you're going to be drawn up to that level and it may take yeah. you a long time, but yeah. So, I mean, ignoring yeah. tribe and isolating yourself is guaranteeing that you will fail. Like one out of 100 people will maybe find success, you know, solo, but probably less than that. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and what I was going to reiterate was I'm not saying shame somebody. I'm saying use their own personal shame to advance them, you know, because like George said, when you have a community, you should have guys who come and pick them up. But it, and, and that's who you surround yourself as those guys. Like it, I know if I'm working out with Dustin and I'm about to fall because Dustin's going to smoke me and everything he pretty much does, except for back workouts. Um, <laughs> he, he's going to come and just be like, hey, dude, come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going. That's what you need. And that's part of being in the tribe is guys who believe in you and, and know what your limitations are. And they push you beyond those because they're like, hey, you're, you're better than this, bro. I know you're stronger, you know, and yeah, I, yeah, using their own personal internal shame, because that's the thing about shame. A lot of people won't talk about this, especially guys, but we have our internal shame that you can kind of turn the clock up on if you provide the right situation. And once that hits, that kind of really just sets a guy on fire and they're like, Oh man, I'm last place right now. And I'm well, it's kind of an, destroyed, in a way you know? it's not necessarily shame. It's more of like appealing to their honor, right? That's yeah, like yeah. a more positive way of saying mm -hmm. like, I mean, I've pushed myself through things like recently that go rug thing I did. There were mo literally moments where I was like, I'm done. I'm like, so going to quit this thing. But there was two soldiers who were there. They knew I was an officer. I was like, okay, no, I, out of sheer, yeah. just pride and reputation, I'm one foot in front of the other. That was literally the only thing that kept me going, you know? So that, that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like with, I would have had to bear the shame of something that I didn't want to bear. And that was enough motivation in a very weak moment for me mentally that kept me from quitting. You know, that, mm -hmm. that's kind of the example I'm talking about. It's because I, those two guys in a way became my little tribe for this event. Cause I knew that they would be like, what a loser <laughs> if I wouldn't have done it, you know? And I needed that. So it's a good thing. That's, that's kind of, I don't want to beat that into the ground but you know i don't know if keith if you're able to like help your clients kind of find that uh you know what's your strategies around that uh yeah no it's it's a i definitely encourage you know my clients to find workout buddies um most of what i do is online training so for them to find somebody in person uh you know who they can do their workouts with who you know, friend family coworker. Uh, that creates that connection and, and as you said like that tribe uh, some people well let's say maybe a lot of people most people respond to competition you know and some people don't and you know those people they have to do you know what works for them just getting in their zone but yeah competition can be a great thing like you know let's let's all do a challenge let's all uh you know, we're gonna do uh 10,000 push-ups this month you know let's 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 go do it and um, that's actually one of the things that I do uh, run is sort of like challenges, um, sort of going to be starting one soon where you're going to actually be able to win some money uh, doing the challenge. Nice. So it's free to join. Uh, you, you complete it 30 days. You get entered into a draw to win some money. So George is like free money. <laughs> free money what are the details around said challenge <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. we'll talk after <laughs> nice Dustin, yeah get a w keith i wanted to dig into your uh vision uh that you have your clients reiterate every morning is that a short mantra like om or you know is it a uh like is it five sentences is it um how, how long is it what is what is that uh, what does that look like uh so yeah when when we create the vision I, I ask them to, to sit down in a quiet place, to, to breathe, to feel the gravity of your breath as it enters and exit, really ground yourself in the moment, be able to feel your toes, your fingers, and then visualize what it is you want in, in your life. And then I have them write it down. So they, they, they're holding onto that feeling, they're writing it down, they're being super specific. Um, you know, mine is a page. So I wake up, the first thing I do, go to the bathroom with my page. I'm on the toilet. I read my, you know, my thing. And then I'll go into the mirror, look at myself in the eyes. I love you. 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 And then I'll take those, those, uh, not regular breaths. They're, they're, uh you know box breathing type thing yeah so. box breathing type things and then take a bunch of those and get myself energized and you know that is the reason i love you and i'm going to get this vision and it's going to happen you know 
because I'm worth it. And, you know, it, and just feel it. And there's been a bunch of times where I, I've been in public and I've just sort of burst out in laughter because I could, I got this super clear glimpse of my vision just, just in the blue. I'm just like, I know that, that it's on its way. I'm attracting it. It's coming, it's happening. And, and it, it's real. Yeah, I, I can relate. That's, I, uh, I do something similar. I, I have uh, like a creed I read every morning. Um, and it's, it's like a living document, right? So as, as things in my life either need more focus or less or whatever, you know, it adapts. But yeah, I wake, it, I wake up every day, read it to myself, and it reminds myself of the things either that I need to hear. Um, and it's like, it's offense, right? You're going into your day reminding yourself of who you are. And, and mm -hmm. what matters. Um, and so that way, when, you know, inevitably something's going to happen, you're not just, you don't have your guard up or whatever. Um, and I've found it to be extremely beneficial. But I also like how you were saying you go in the mirror and you tell yourself you love yourself. I mean, that's positive self-talk. Um, you know, go to any, like, great sports trainer, coach. They all make pro athletes do positive self-talk. Like, even the best of the best need to pump themselves up. Like, so, yep. of course, we do in our day-to-day. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm excited to uh, to take this on and try it. I think um, when you mentioned taking yourself into a place where you're really in a good meditative state, that, that makes a lot of sense. Because if I were just go right now and just write some things down, it wouldn't probably be as meaningful as if I really found the right moment. And then to take that beautiful moment and then recreate it every day, I'm excited to try this. I think this is going to be really cool. So thank you for, for sharing that. I agree, man. I, I think I'm... I'm great at self-talk in my own head, but not visually doing. And I think there's something to be said about the visual aspect of that, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I kind of wanted to lead into another question that that made me think of. So yeah, we all have those days where you're just like, screw it, man. You don't feel like doing anything. You just don't have the willpower or the mindset or whatever. What do you usually do to correct course or do you correct course? What, what advice would you give to dads on those kind of days to either write the ship or turn the ship completely in a different direction and take a day off? I mean, what would, what do you see best for that? Part of it is, I guess I would like, I'd equate it to like a craving. If you ever deal with like a craving that comes to you and how it comes to you, a sort of different ways, right? Either it comes to you as a thought, you think something and then you either become that thought where it comes as an emotion, you feel it, and then it just sort of takes over you that way. If you have the thought, oh, I got to work out, right? It's, you can instantly, if, you're, if you catch you, yourself having that thought, you can instantly change it and then rethink, I get to work out. And if that is able to change your mindset like obviously if you've had if you've worked you know 12 hours you, you're just you know physically exhausted mentally exhausted there's nothing that you can do uh then there's nothing you can do but is that your every single day if is that your normal is that your baseline because if that's the case then something's gonna have to change right but if it's a one-off where you know, it was a really really hard day then you know it's okay to take take it off or or do something light or you know, just try to start because maybe when you find that you've started something that that was just the issue, right? Just getting started. And you're like, hey, actually, you know, the, all those thoughts of uh, me being tired, me not wanting to do this, that is just all ego flog. And, you know, I'm actually enjoying this now. Why, why was I thinking of not doing this? You know, uh, hey, just go for a walk. Just clear your head. See how you feel after that. I, I couldn't agree more. So there's two things that I do for myself personally. And it's actually recently I faced one of my biggest fears, which is height. And I went down a uh, straight down water slide in, in the Bahamas in front of my son and wife, who my <laughs> wife was cheering me on, but at the same time making fun of me. Uh, <laughs> nine and a half stories down, straight down. Wow. I'm terrified of heights. My legs are shaking. I'm up there. The wind's blowing hard. I can feel it swaying. I'm like, oh, Lord, just protect me. I've got this cross <laughs> on. And a gentleman stops. Um, his name is Mike Lowe. Never forget yeah. him. A dad. And uh, we were chatting at the bottom about the podcast. And he goes, uh, just be like, Jesus, take the first step. I was like, oh. 
<laughs> not only did you challenge me like spiritually, but like mentally, like, oh, so I did. I took the first step. I felt my feet in the water. I was like, this is going to be all right. I trust in this. Let's just do it. And when I crossed my arms and the water hit me, I was already going. And there's nothing you can yeah. do at that point. You know, you're yeah. going down. And and I, it kind of taught me something there. Facing my fear taught me that if you just step into what you need to do and lean into it and just go after it and just, like you said, do the action without even thinking about it or do the action with without allowing yourself to stop yourself that's that's the biggest thing but two is gratitude you know we had a we had a guest on um previously cody jefferson he talked really well or he spoke really well about um how you can use you know your gratitude to to further yourself at least physically because he was talking about a, a gentleman who had approached him who's in a wheelchair and was like man thank you for being fit like you have the opportunity to do that there's people who don't so yeah. like for me, it's realizing, hey, I still can run. I have the ability to lift weights. I have the ability to do something with my life. And then it's also being like, hey, are you brave enough to take this step? Or are you just going to sit back and be a lazy punk? You know. Yeah. So those are the two things that kind of use me uh, for yeah, I use for myself. And and I thought that was really interesting what you said because I I think those those are the things that we as men don't really think a lot about, and we need to think more of. Uh, is just saying, hey. Just take that step. Just do the action and don't even think about it. Just make it natural. And then once you do that, it becomes a habit and it just goes from there and snowballs, you know? Exactly. Yep. Keith, uh, do you get a lot of like haters? People talking trash on the internet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the one that really stood out to me, which is, is I don't know, just I, I think it must have been a troll because. He claimed he was a personal trainer at 17 and he was trying to make fun of me saying that I had a physique of a 17 year old. I'm like, that's really not an insult, you know, like, but he was trying to make it sound like an insult. And I don't know. I've had, you know, people say like, you know, Oh, you're your personal trainer. You're not big enough or like your personal trainer, you, you know, you need to take steroids and all that stuff. And it's like, well, if I want to be like, you know, a meathead or whatever, then yeah, but it's, that's not, not what it's about so i've had yeah i've had some haters for sure um actually one of the youtube videos that i've uh posted was about wearing gloves so i wear gloves at the gym and um you know in the gym culture oh you know men no oh, you can't have soft hands oh you I, hands. I don't know if we can continue the podcast now i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> we're about to be your haters <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> hey you know you know what time out real quick so i don't think a lot of people realize this but achilles was only 15 years old when he fought in the trojan war that's a good point think about that he was one of the deadliest guys back then just, yep. just all right that out there yeah <laughs> no sorry i didn't mean to throw you off Keith. <laughs> wear the gloves that is a that is a common joke for those who don't really know that that it's like not manly to wear gloves in the gym. Ah, you know, twenty twenty three. If you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. Who cares what anyone else thinks? You're there to do you, right? So that's it. As long as you're doing your goals and and accomplishing things. I mean, yep. I definitely use like straps on very heavy deadlifts and things like that because the last thing I want to do is <laughs> have my grip <laughs> drop the bar and. Now you're, now you're having other problems, like your foot's not going to work anymore. So, exactly. yeah, there's definitely a, a line for that. But I was, I was also curious if you get, um, you know, like really accusational type of hate, like, uh, you know, how dare you assume that it's not okay to have a dad bod or any of that kind of like mentality. You know, like the, the, it's, like, it's similar to like the mentality. ableist thing, like, you know, oh, so you're not body positive because, you know, you're trying to like help dads lose weight. I'm just curious if that's been a thing or not so much I, I i haven't got it yet but i'm i'm really i think i should be getting it because if i do get that then i think i'm doing the right thing it, nice double you, down you, you, yeah right you you spoke about um george you spoke about uh, some guy with, with a bunch of groceries right and it was just like all this nasty stuff right we are living in a society where the right thing to do would to be to tell him, hey, look, not not shame him, not shame him, but tell him like truthfully, like, look, dude, heart to heart, you you're on a course to kill yourself within the next 15 years, 20 years. And if you don't, your quality of life is just not going to be there. There are no obese fat people, 
or sorry, there are no obese elderly people. Like period. Like they, there are none. Like you, if you need to change your life, and I'm sorry, it's going to hurt your feelings, but your feelings are already hurt. You're depressed. There's something yeah. wrong inside of you, and me telling you that. If that hurts your feelings and gets you on a course of life and saves your life and gives you a quality of life, then that's the right thing to do. Right. It's, it's, it's given from a place of love because you're concerned about their future. Um, it's interesting you bring that up too, because, you know, go back to the early 1900s in America, Theodore Roosevelt gave numerous speeches to college graduates, high school graduates. And that was his message exactly to, and almost every single one, you can look them up. They're like, you know, published record or whatever. Um, was that men need to hold other men accountable for when they're in public, not doing the right mm. things or not, yep. not being a citizen worthy, you know, and then if you do that today, you're going to get like the cops called on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to jail. So it's just crazy how, uh, you know, wanting to genuinely help people is now seen as uh offense, you know, but I think you're right. I agree with you. You got to double down on that and, and stand firm. And that's how we, change it right is, is when enough men and dads stand up and say hey this is this is the standard we are setting for our families and and for what we want our culture to be so i'm, I'm glad you leaned into that man it's good to hear yeah Thank you God. believe in it yeah i mean and you have to and and if you believe in it you need to stand strong in it and and something i wanted to say about that is i think society has accepted mediocrity they've accepted mm -hmm. acceptance they're like oh you're okay if you're this or you're that no like that's not what you're meant to be. And, and I think that's the problem is now it's gotten so much that we've accepted acceptance that they're starting to do what we call fit shaming. We had a space about it with uh, Dan go. There's something called fit shaming now. Like how can you be too fit? That's that, that doesn't make any sense. Like you go to a we, party, we're in an upside down, down world. Something and yeah. I mean, we're in an upside down world. world that somebody who's 300 pounds overweight can be accepted, but somebody who's, outrageously fit and works way beyond their years is not like, how does that even compute? I, I don't know. That's just, that's the point I wanted to make is that our society is accepting mediocrity and less and worse, honestly. And, and that's a problem. And that's, that's where it stems yes. from. And people are afraid they're going to get canceled or, or, you know, not be as lucrative in something that they're pursuing. And it's like, Screw that, man. Who cares how successful we are? If if we're doing the right thing, we're standing up for what we, we know is right. And that's what's right. Treat your body like a temple. Do the right things for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, and and be a man, be a father, be a brother, you know, whatever it needs to be, whatever your you know goal is. But anyways, that's just something I wanted to get off my chest. So well, I mean, the the there's societies ancient wise that were were much more on the path that we need to be. We're a weak society in general because of the the delicacies and the, the easiness that we have from technology and all those things. So like you had your Greeks with the arete, uh, which was like a, a, it was an ethical philosophy and a lifestyle that you strived for excellence and virtue in everything. Right. And then the mm -hmm. Latins, you know, they had uh, men sana in, what was it? Uh, co corpore sano, which is like basically, you have to be both intellectually and physically smart. And so my question for you, when, since we're talking about society is I, I, you had mentioned that you had done a lot of soul searching and you seem like a very philosophical guy, like a very deep, complex, analytical thinking person. So to me, what do you do to exercise and keep your mind as sharp as your body? Uh, yeah. Uh, Living in the moment is, I think, the best way to, uh, you know, as best as you can. You can obviously stay in the moment, but you, you staying uh, there as long as you can is the best way to train your mind to be able to dissociate from your thoughts and realize that you aren't your thoughts, you aren't your feelings, you are the awareness of them, I think is, is a huge way to be able to uh, train the mind and, you know, as you give up stuff, as you get out of your comfort zone, you're also training your mind. Uh, we talked about facing your fears. Uh, I also had fear of uh, heights and um, I took rock climbing. And, uh, you know, every single time that I go rock climbing still, 
the first one is is super scary, and I, I'm presented with thoughts, feelings that are very intense, that are very, you know, uh, concerning, but sort of just able to put space around them. And through that act, I think that strengthens my mind, strengthens my willpower. Um, and then just, you know, to do the act that, uh, you know, I face my fears, but then on the other side to learn something new. So uh, to try to, whatever that might be, try to learn a new program, try to learn uh, a new language, try to, try to, try to just constantly doing things that, that challenge you as an individual so that you are growing, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. I love that. Great answer. Thank you. I was going to ask, uh, are, are your kids old enough to kind of start, you know, working out with dad or not quite? Um, well, uh, so the two-year-old is just kind of like a dumbbell at this point. But, uh, <laughs> that is the uh, workout. That is the workout. The you seven-year-old your, is... your front delts worked real good, you know, lifting. Yeah, well, and lots of these and lots of squats, and uh, and then the seven-year-old is just a heavier dumbbell. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, no, she's she's um, she's actually done some workouts with me, um, uh, where we just sort of do some just body weight, uh, you know, push-ups or mountain climbers and jumping jacks and that sort of stuff, and. It's good bonding time because you know we're doing something together. She's you know not on the screen, and uh, it's uh, father daughter time. It's, it's special. That's great, man. Yeah, I, I, you know I've kind of talked about it a little bit before, but it, you're, you're you're normalizing healthy habits, right? So as she grows, as your kids grow, they'll just think that that's the norm, and so they have exactly. a much higher uh, likelihood that they'll just embrace you know, exercise and healthy habits when they become adults and it won't be like this weird thing. They'll just expect it um, <clears throat> and resist like peer pressure against it, like fit shaming and stuff, you know, but uh, that's great. Like, do they, do they, uh, you know, you go on walks and they challenge you to like, Hey, I want to race to the thing or whatever, you know, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that's my daughter's favorite. Can we race to the mailbox? Sure. kiddo, take off. Let's go. She uh, expressed interest in cross country and then, um, I don't know. She found out that it's at lunchtime, so now she doesn't want to do it. So, but yeah, she's always challenging me to run. She wants to run everywhere, run this and there. Um, we taken up rollerblading together, which has been really fun. Uh, <laughs> so she gets a kick. Uh, <laughs> I'll do the voice for you. She's always telling me, "Do the voice, do the voice." So. I pretend like an Olympic announcer. I'd be like, oh, it's Willow McNabb and she's going up for Team Canada and she's in number one place. Is she going to be able to maintain? And I'm just, you know, holding her as we're going around in circles and she just, do it again, do the voice, do it again. Just, uh, and, and, you know, and, and for me to do the voice while rollerblading with her and, and try, it's that's a lot of energy coming out of me, right? So, and it's not something that I'd be able to do a year ago. Like, psh, no way, but um yeah no it's just just i'm just such a better person i'm a better dad i don't have a partner at the moment but i know if i did i would be a much better partner as well that's great man here i want to uh for those who are going to watch on on the youtube uh oh, wrong one here i want to i want to show your transformation so on the left there uh you know pr pretty dad bod Pretty dad tastic <laughs> right there, kind of your what you'd expect a, a thirty something dad to look like, right? But on the right here, dang man, goals, you know. Um, how long between these pictures? Uh, so she's, uh, I think, three in that picture. So that's four year difference. But okay. um, I was pretty much looking like that, if not worse, um, probably like ten months uh, before the picture on the right. Wow. That's a pretty rapid transformation, man. That's awesome. Thanks. Good yeah. to see. It's possible. You look like a 17 year old there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Weird. That was my youth. 
I mean, I would almost take that as a compliment. Yeah, I do. Seventeen, I was wrestling, and I was like three percent body fat. You know, I was like, I'll never look that shredded again in my life. You know, (laughs) like people say, go back to the glory days. You know, aesthetically, like my senior year of high school, probably some of the best I've ever looked in my life. So, someone accused me of looking like that. I'd be like, okay, great, thank you. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Oh man. That's great. So, so there's one more thing, uh, and I know we're, we're going to be wrapping up here soon, but um, I've seen a lot on your Instagram, like a lot of hilarious dad jokes. So do you have like a favorite dad joke punchline that you want to give the, the audience? Oh, I, I wasn't prepared. Um, <laughs> I, I guess tomorrow tomorrow's joke was going to be... Um, oh, nice. Oh, Sneak preview on the... Uh, the- <laughs> right, yeah, nice. Heard it here first, fellas. Heard it here first. And Let's ladies. See what, it was... Uh, this will get edited and published after, but that's okay. <laughs> well, so uh, why did the farmer... Uh, why did the farmer have to leave the gym? Why? Because he was killing his calves. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Dustin, ask me about the other one. The uh, the oh con, yeah, the prisoners and, and the um. Oh uh, yeah, yeah that, that was today, right? That was a good one. Who who's so uh, you know why the profession uh, the athletes lift uh, more than the the prisoners, right? Why? Because the because the pros outweigh the cons. Ah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Bravo! Well done. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, sir. Dad jokes for days. There's two man. quality dad jokes in one episode for you all, listeners. Yeah. So you're welcome. That's right, because we haven't done the dad joke shorts in a while. That was Courtesy like our, our icebreaker for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we've oh, been a little okay. we've been a little too serious recently. We'll we'll have to bring back some dad jokes on our channel. Yeah. But absolutely. The universal <laughs> the universal bad dad joke. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, so I think you have the Yeah, uh, I was gonna say the there's question. a there's a question we ask every dad. Um and it kind of varies a little bit depending on the person, but um what is if if you close your mind or your eyes and just think in your mind what either core memory or i guess just event or something with your kids that you remember what's that first thing that you think about like what what really comes to mind as far as like a story or like the coolest thing you've experienced with your kids or just something you're always going to cherish um yeah i just I think one of the ones would be uh, taking my daughter rock climbing and um, seeing her get to the top of the wall, even at uh, seven, um, was just one of the things I'm not gonna gonna can ever forget. Because I, I remember all the other times she'd get like halfway, she'd get scared, you know, daddy, 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 oh, and then you know she'd jump down, and then just just I can just still remember how much joy and how proud of herself she was when she got at the top, and how proud I was of her too. So, you know, I'll never forget that. What a victory! That's great. I love it, man. And I, I've got a I've got a little dad joke for you. So I used to be addicted to soap, but now I'm clean. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Boo! Uh, <laughs> ah. Oh. I will. Uh, I'll have to insert the the didich to that one. The audio effect. But all right, um, Keith, where's the best place for people to uh, learn more about you and to get engaged with you if they're interested in your coaching? Yeah, so you can find me on my website at thetrainerguy.ca. I'm on YouTube at the Trainer Guy. Uh, I'm on Instagram, the real trainer guy, TikTok, the real trainer guy, uh, and Facebook trainer guy. So you can uh, reach out to me at uh, any of those places. I do have a few more spots open and anybody who's listening to this, uh, you just use uh, the code that's listed below and we'll get uh, 10% off uh, one of my personal training packages. All right. How about that? That's awesome. Um, Keith, any final words of wisdom for the dads out there that you'd like to share? You guys can do it. You guys are worth it. You know, it's so important, not just for yourself, but for your family. Just, you know, think about all the reasons why you should be taking care of yourself versus there's really no reason why you shouldn't. So (laughs) there you go. All right, Keith, it's been a real pleasure, man. Uh, Thank you for coming on and sharing your story and, uh, giving us some great advice, especially when it comes to the, the kind of mental state to, uh, 
the focus on our fitness. So thank you for that. I love your heart for helping others. And uh, I love your approach to helping dads be fit. So uh, once again, it's the real trainer guy or the, the trainer guy on basically every platform. Check him out. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Let's get climbing, dads. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Present Fathers Podcast. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify to catch all of our amazing episodes. We will see you in the next one.